welcome to the next aspect of cooling tower. Here uh, we are going to discuss uh, the various components of cooling tower. Apart from this, uh, we will discuss about uh, the material of construction and uh, various applications of uh, cooling tower. Now before we start, uh, let us have a look that what we discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the different type of cooling towers. Uh, for convenience, I am again reading out all these uh, uh, towers like natural drought cooling towers, cross flow forced drought cooling towers. Uh, then we discussed about the cross flow induced drought cooling towers, then contra flow forced drought cooling towers, contra flow induced drought cooling towers, indirect evaporative cooling towers, evaporative condensers. Now, if you recall in the previous lecture, we discussed about the various components because if you see, if you recall the figure of any cooling tower, there are so many things in the cooling towers. So, and every component is having its own um, uh, importance in the cooling tower. So, what are those components? We started the discussing, uh, discussing about this one. Then the materials, uh, different type of materials of cooling tower. So when we were started the discussion, we end up with uh, the packing concept. Now in this particular lecture, we will have the remaining discussion related to the components and materials of cooling tower. We will discuss about the drift eliminators. Um, we will discuss about the water distribution uh, system then the cold water basin and fan and fan stripes. If you recall that uh, um, these are the integral part of uh, uh, cooling tower. Apart from this, uh, we will discuss about the material used in manufacturing of cooling tower and uh, lastly, we will discuss about the various application of uh, cooling towers. So, let us uh, start with the drift eliminators. The purpose of uh, drift eliminator is to control unnecessary loss of water because water is a key component in the cooling tower. So, the role of this drift eliminator is to avoid such kind of loss um, may be uh, attributed to the during the operation of uh, the cooling tower. The acceptable drift loss is uh, the ranges between 0 0.1 to 0 0.25 percent of the total water circulate. The use of PVC as a packing material in complex shape enable to reduce this kind of drift loss. The losses below 0 0.005 and down to 0 0.001 percent can now be readily or easily achieved and may be specified for the cooling tower in sensitive locations. Now the drift loss expressing in terms of percentage. This may misleading as uh, implies this loss in the milligram per meter cube rises in the proportion to the flow rate of water. Now, whether the drift loss uh, within uh, the wide limit is not affected by the flow rate of the water. Now, there is a need for extremely tight control of drift due to result in the, the Legionnaire disease with the use of PVC as packing material. Now here this uh, particular figure representing a metal lipped corrugated plate design which is heavy, prone to build up scale and very difficult to clean and not very efficient for use. Now this is, uh, you see, uh, this is the metal lipped corrugated plate eliminator. Now, this uh, particular figure shows the aerofoil section plate eliminator. Now, this uh, aerofoil section plate of uh, 150 millimeter depth, the performance is satisfactory at air velocity of 1 meter per second for velocities ranging from 2.5 to 3 meter per second for draught tower. Now, the efficiency is extremely poor in this uh, a particular type of uh, air force section of eliminator. Now, this particular figure shows the uh, in elevation the shape of uh, one 
two, three, or four pass uh, plastic eliminator. Now, here you see that this is the one pass, and this is the two pass, and a three pass, and a four pass type. One, two, three, four pass type of eliminator. Now, these uh, type of uh, eliminators are highly efficient and uh, they restrict the drift to 0 0.005 uh, with a single pass of uh, to 0.001 percent with two pass and nearly undetectable levels with a 3 to 4 pass. Now, this is uh, you see that uh, this is the photograph of uh, a complete eliminator as fitted to a tower. Now, in the contraflow cooling towers, the eliminators are fitted above the water distribution system and uh, this can be designed for single or two or three or four pass as per the requirement in that particular application. Now, in cross flow force draught towers, the eliminator is fixed alongside the pack on the air discharge side and sometimes it is integral with the pack and one must be very careful about the fitting and sealing of the drift eliminator and it is quite essential to ensure that uh, all discharge air passes through the eliminator passage. Now, let us talk about uh, the water distribution. Now, in contraflow towers, either forced or induced draught have hot water distribution system below the drift eliminators, whereas in cross flow design, it is reversed that uh, of the contra flow towers. Uh, there are four approaches uh, of design of water distribution system. Now, one is uh, open pan or diffusion deck system. Second is the trough and gutter type of uh, design with over spill. Now, let us talk about uh, the open pan or uh, diffusion deck system. Usually, it consists of uh, a pan of uh, same area as uh, pack having a number of holes, so as to give an even uh, spread of hot water across the pack and should have cover to reduce algae growth because algae growth sometimes it creates a massive problem. And the water may be delivered into the pan from an open pipe. Here you see that uh, this is uh, the two cross flow induced draught tower. This is uh, uh, th this showing the open pan gravity distribution system. Now, true and gutter design over uh, with over spill. Now, this is uh, in this particular type of uh, system the inlet water is delivered to a main trough that is usually made up of steel and uh, there are a number of outlets in the base of the trough feeding into a series of gutters to cover all area of the packing. Now, there are various designs used to spill the water from gutter on the pack maybe V notch or simple corrugation along the sides of the gutter. Now, here you see the typical, uh, typical uh, uh, true and gutter water distribution system. Now, uh, let us talk about uh, the spray distribution from nozzle. Now, the PVC or uh, polypropylene based nozzles, they are mainly used in water distribution system. The water is uh, distributed into the header pipe, where a series of branches running across the pack area with distribution nozzle fitted into each branches. The nozzles are easily detachable for cleaning. So, uh, the any kind of I mean, cleaning or uh, any kind of a replacement or wear and tear can be uh, the problem of such kind can be resolved easily. All parts of stray distribution from nozzles should be of the material like steel, ABS, PVC, etcetera, which does not provide nutrients to bacteria. 
Now, because if uh, the nutrients are there, then definitely the microbial growth may be there and uh, in that case, uh, uh, the, the problem of uh, uh, efficiency and uh, the wear and tear may arise. Now, this is uh, the, the figure which shows the polypropylene in, uh, spray nozzle for water distribution. Now, nozzles uh, they uh, use, is, uh, use the timber to, to direct water into splash cups. Now, this uh, provides uh, improved distribution of water to the packing because improved distribution of water in the packing is quite essential for the proper efficiency of the cooling tower as well as it imparts the energy efficiency aspect too. So, the cost of running of uh, the cooling tower may be lower down. So, all kind of uh, water distribution requires pump, pipe work to deliver the water to the top of the tower. Now, you see that if you recall that we are having the water distribution network. So, you require the pump and a pipe work which can deliver the wat water to the top. But the size and mounting position of pump, this all depends on the volumetric flow rate what kind of volumetric flow rate you require and how, what kind of the pump pressure you require. And that too depends on the other thermodynamic factors through which you can design uh, the things accordingly. Now, if you recall that uh, at the bottom of uh, the, uh, the cooling tower, there is a cold water basin. Now, this is uh, uh, sometimes known as a sump, tank or pond which requires uh, different type of connections. Now, one is to maintain the water level because appropriate water level is essential and that is why the valves or the floating valves are there. An inlet to make up water from the main supply with the float valve and other control which is required because an optimum level of uh, water is quite essential for the smooth functioning of uh, this cold water basin fitted to the, uh, the cooling tower. Now, there is also need of connection of water filtration and treatment because sometimes debris and other things may present there. So, a water filtration and a treatment devices should be there to remove the dirt and dust whatever I mean uh, um, incorporate during the course of action. Another thing is that to prevent the freezing of pump suction outlet, uh, there is a need of a provisioning of a thermostatically controlled electric heater. Because if uh, the temperature is not maintained at the appropriate level, then the circulation of uh, this uh, water would be extremely difficult. And especially this type of uh, thing is needed uh, in the cold countries. For overflow outlet, there is need of basin, a cold water return pipe work connection and a minimum 80 mm drain in the uh, floor of basin. Now, fans and fan drives uh, as uh, we were discussing in the previous lectures, they are again the integral part of the cooling tower. The factors which affect the selection of uh, fans, they are quite complicated and uh, we need to address for the proper efficiency of this cooling tower. So, there are various factors uh, associated with uh, such kind of uh, selection criteria. One is that the fan speed varies directly with the air flow rate. So, how much air flow is required, that is uh, one of the deciding factor for the proper fan. Second is that the pressure varies as a square of the speed of the fan. So, how much pressure you require, that is again one of the, the deciding factor of uh, uh, your fans and fan drives. Then the power consumption varies cubically of uh, fan speed because ultimately basic objective is that uh, the every operation should be cost effective or economically feasible. So, we must look into the power consumption aspects too. So, uh, we need to look into this aspect and uh, this is again one of the major criteria of uh, the fan selection. 
then the noise level will be higher with the fan speed. The manufacturer provides the detail of noise level under the test condition. See, uh, noise pollution in uh, different uh, chemical industry is again a very crucial aspect and uh, all the, the pollution control boards, they are very critical about the noise level. So, if you increase the fan speed, then definitely the noise level will be on the higher side and usually the manufacturer provides the detail in decibel about these noise levels. So, if it is within the acceptable limit, then you can, uh, you can uh, select the appropriate uh, uh, fan. Otherwise, you need to go for the optimization with respect to the, the air flow rate, pressure and a power consumption. Now, the greater the air flow rate can be handled with the, a larger diameter of a fan, but sometimes the space restriction, they also play a very vital role. Now, with a reduce uh, um, reduction in the speed of the motor below say 500 rpm, there are frame size and the cost of the motor rises. So, you have to look into this uh, while optimizing the appropriate fan. Now, it is economical to use a standard four pole motor with belt or gear drive to the fan and the belt drive is used in the centrifugal fan. Now, let us talk about the materials used in the cooling tower manufacturing. Uh, one of the foremost choice is the steel. It has good strength and uh, it, uh, the things can be easily fabricated. So, therefore, it is quite useful in the construction of a cooling tower. Apart from that, uh, it provides a good corrosion resistance, so useful in uh, coating also. Now, the area because uh, the corrosion is again a very important thing because the area of exposed for attack such as uh, cut, sometimes drilled or welded or even the smallest unprotected area in milli galvanized sheet, this can lead to the formation of uh, corrosion as compared to the unprotected mild steel. So, one must be very careful about this particular aspect because uh, sometimes it can create a dent into the system. Other finishes uh, such as bitumen, plastic coating, rubber coating, these may be useful, but uh, thorough cleaning and degreasing is essential for better use. Stainless steel is used for manufacturing of the cooling tower with 11.5 percent of chromium content. Its corrosion resistance is superior to untreated mild steel by the factor of say 250 when used in say marine environment. The use of steel pipe work in conjunction with the plastic piping, this should be avoided due to the differential expansion problem. See, because of the temperature difference, uh, the, the expansion issues uh, pertaining to the plastic will be more prominent towards the, uh, with respect to the steel. So, in that case, uh, there may be a problem of compatibility issue. So, to avoid this, uh, we need to avoid such kind of a combination in the fabrication. Another is the synthetic material. The polyvinyl chloride is the most important material used in uh, manufacturing uh, of the complex shapes, um, which does not distort it even at say 60 degree Celsius temperature. Even it does not combust, uh, but have a chance to attack of some kind of uh, organic solvent. Those who, uh, who can dissolve or who can deform the shape of uh, these uh, PVC structure. The glass reinforced plastic, uh, which covers a range of materials based on the polyester, they can be used as the construction of a small packed towers. The glass, uh, the glass reinforced plastic is suitable for temperature range say up to 80 to 100 degree Celsius and should need to be treated with the, uh, different type of uh, fire retardants. A cryonitrile butadiene styrene sometimes referred as ABS is an again alternative to the tower construction. It has uh, the high impact strength and is suitable for the temperature range say up to 60 to 70 degree Celsius. So, for manufacturing of a drift eliminator and packing, other synthetic materials such as polypropylene, polystyrene and high density polyethylene, these can be used. 
like polypropylene this can be used in uh, the manufacturing of fan blades, but with a glass reinforcement. It has higher softening temperature, so it is suitable for packing and can be used up to say 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. Polystyrene, especially high impact polystyrene can ignite after say heating to 60 degrees Celsius or more and it becomes uh, hazardous as it burns rapidly and gives the toxic fumes like dioxin etc. The polypropylene used up to 60 degrees Celsius, it can ignite, but sometimes they have a slow burning behavior like polypropylene. It will sustain combustion unless extinguished. Another important uh, material of construction is timber. It is cost effective material for manufacturing of tower structure such as timber frames, cladding, packing, etc. It is used after fabrication with a suitable preservatives. Now, there are different type of timbers those who are widely used like western red cedar, Douglas fir, the Baltic redwood, etc. The western red cedar is costly, but simultaneously it is more durable and absorbs least amount of preservatives. The Douglas fir is uh, the resistant to uh, absorb the preservatives. Uh, Baltic redwood absorbs least amount of preservatives. It is most useful in um, comparable to the other two. Now, the timber based structure of tower gives good service life uh, say up to 30 years if maintained rigorously and continuously. Sometimes rottening of the timber may take place and rotting of timber based packing may take place by the various species and uh, uh, such as fungus and molds etc. Now, the tree based materials constitutes of cellulose and lignin and some of the fungus they do attack to cellulose only and other can attack both cellulose and lignin. The brown rot which attacks on cellulose and white rot attacks on cellulose and lignin both, they play a very important role in cooling tower timber. Now, wet rot is generally found in the fence post close to the ground and causes uh, decay in the structure of uh, the tower. Uh, the soft rot occurs when the surface of the structure is softened, the name of fungi which causes the soft rock are named as Fusarium, Gaffium, Glidodinium. The preservatives used as a copper, chrome, arsenates, uh, creosotes, which gives good results with the thorough penetration. One of the disadvantage of uh, use of timber in cooling tower is the formation of algae and bacteria, which can develop over the period of time and they can develop so rapidly the steel is uh, and uh, so steel structure is sometimes beneficial compared to the timber structure. Now, let us talk about uh, the application of uh, water cooling tower. Now, this it has uh, the diverse application in which uh, each require the special requirement uh, in terms of temperature level, layout of pipe work and methods of control. Now, there are some applications uh, of cooling tower like application in refrigeration plant, air compressors, engines, metallurgical processes, chemical and refinery plants, turbine condensers, cooling, etc. Uh, one of the foremost uh, you can say the application is in the refrigeration plant. So, cooling tower they have important application in the various refrigeration plant for each ton of refrigerant that is 3.5 kilogram of cooling. The rate of heat extraction from condenser is roughly around 4.2 kilowatt. The factors of cooling tower design such as water temperature and overall heat transfer coefficient of condenser they affect the performance of the refrigeration plants. The constant condensing temperature, these are essential for 
correct operation of refrigeration plants such as, as the temperature of water from the cooling tower varies with wet bulb temperature. So, the control is necessary. Now, here you see that the schematic uh, uh, diagram for direct control condenser and use of cooling tower in the refrigeration system. Now, here you see this is the condenser and uh, air discharge assembly and rest other things are common which we have already discussed in the previous lectures. Air compressors. In industrial compressors, the compressing of air will rise its temperature and thereby the heat, excessive heat may be generated. So, the heat generated is carried out by the water jacket surrounding the cylinder wall. Uh, the reciprocating compressor, they have the two stages of compression and for every stage, there is a need of intercooler by using water cooling tower. The rise in temperature of the air due to compression is also treated with the water cooling tower as per this particular figure. Now, here you see that uh, this is the schematic diagram for showing the cooling circuit for single stage air compressor. Now, here you see this is uh, the single stage air compressor and rest other things like packing, air discharge, all these things as usual which we have discussed earlier. Next is the engine. The cooling tower have functions in the diesel engine to remove the heat from the combustion process and retaining the cylinder wall temperature at a relatively high level necessary to ensure the efficient combustion. Heat also generated in oil coolers, intercoolers which is need to be removed uh, with the use of a cooling tower. The application uh, of the cooling tower in the cooling the diesel engine is as per this one. Now, here this is the diesel engine and with the help of this oil cooler, it can be removed with the help of this cooling tower. Another application in the metallurgical process. In the metallurgical process, the high temperature furnaces are used to, uh, for processing different kind of materials. Uh, for steel, the temperature is around 850 degrees Celsius and for non-ferrous material, it is around 550 degrees Celsius in the main heating zone. Now, to prevent the oxidation of metal, it must be cooled to 250 degrees Celsius before leaving the exit tunnel and cooling is usually achieved by the water flowing through the, uh, the jacket in the cooling tunnels. The temperature of cooling water is roughly around 24 to 27 degrees Celsius with a permissible rise of 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. Now, here you see that, uh, that the, this uh, cooling tower is the same, but this is the pre-cooling chamber and this is the bal balance tank. This is a schematic diagram showing the cooling tower application for the furnace pot cooling chamber. Another uh, application is in the chemical and refinery plants. And the cooling tower, they have a wide application in all chemical and refinery plants. Now, there is a need of a large mechanical drought tower in some cases, natural drought hyperbolic tower for different processes and for the process of uh, for relatively small flow rates, the small to medium size tower can be used. Now, to avoid the chemical contaminations of cooling tower, the special care may be required in case of the presence of some organic solvent which can create a problem where we are using the plastic material in, in a different part of tower whether it is a packing or whether it is in terms of the fan blade. The plumes uh, coming out uh, from the tower may lead to uh, complaints in the residential area. So, a careful sitting of tower is necessary. So, the, during the designing of the tower, these, these aspect may uh, need to be addressed. Now, another application in the turbine condenser cooling. In power plants, the turbine condenser cooling, this requires the use of water cooling tower, which may be a natural drought or mechanical drought tower. The cooling ranges may vary between the small industries and a giant power station condenser this ranges from 6 to 12 degrees Celsius. The approach temperature may be 12 to 17 degrees Celsius according to the locality. So, at last in this particular lecture, we have discussed about the uh, 
the various components of uh, cooling tower. We had a broad discussion about uh, the various application of these cooling tower in different industries. For your convenience, we have enlisted a couple of references. If you wish, you can have a look of all those references for further reading. Thank you very much.